A while back before Endgame released, a bunch of YouTubers made videos about their favorite scene from the Marvel Cinematic Universe, titling them One Marvelous Scene. For me, there's never really been a scene that jumped out to me as being particularly special. I think a lot of this has to do with my overall thoughts on the MCU as a whole. I have a love and hate relationship with this franchise. There are some movies that are really, really good, even great, and there are others that make me reconsider my investment in this universe. But at the end of the day, there's always been one man who's touched me, spoken to me at my very core and that's Steven Rogers. Captain America, a man who was picked on most of his life until being granted a super serum, uses that power not for vengeance as most people who've been kicked all their life would, but to protect the world from bullies, whether that be Nazis or Josh Brolin. A man whose rock-hard morals cause him constant trial and tribulation, but never complains about the sacrifice he has to make to uphold those morals. The only man who could stand against the entirety of S.H.I.E.L.D. and HYDRA. Hell, I'm someone who might burst into tears if my manager looks at me wrong. He is just a man filled with so much bravery, compassion, and ideological fortitude. Not to mention he far and away gets the best writing and the best individual moments in the MCU. How about that grenade scene from the first Avenger that had me crying the first time I saw it because seeing that someone's first instinct is to lay down their life to save others made me want to be a more selfless person as a boy. Or how about his argument with Tony in the first Avengers movie where he demonstrates he doesn't care about what powers you have or what suit you build. It's about what's in your heart and what you're willing to sacrifice for your friends and your comrades. No, those are all superb, but my favorite scene is what exemplifies Cap to his very core. One man standing against the army of Thanos, injured, bloodied, and no backup in sight, he stands there, ready to lay down his life for the sake of his home and his friends. It's not just about the moments for Steve, it's also about the journey. From his relationship to Tony, to how he views the American government and its role in the everyday American's life. It's odd seeing so much change in a character who's supposedly the rock hard center of the universe. The cynic would call him a boring person with no real character development behind him, but that's simply not the case. Even though he isn't Spider-Man, Steve constantly lives with the idea of great power, there must also come great responsibility, and that's just something I love seeing in a superhero. Someone sacrificing every bit of themselves because it's their responsibility. Or you could be like Tony and not let your wife leave your very public address that everyone knows after you issued a challenge to a global terrorist. Steve lives and wrestles with so much pain. He had to miss out on a life of happiness and love with Peggy because he's someone who will always do the right thing no matter the cost. Until Endgame allowed him a happy ending, of course. Even though Joe Johnston started this character off, and even though they are crucified by teenage girls who want these movies just to be their personal fan fictions, the Russos are probably the number one reason why I love this character. They bring so much passion and cleverness to this character, and how he fits into the overall universe without being lost in a sea of 50 other people just amazes me. Hey guys, it's me, Hackjob Films, and you know what? I love Captain America. I think the thing that has always made Steve Rogers stand out against the rest of the Avengers is his will to persevere and his ability to stay true to himself, no matter the cost. Over the course of the MCU, Cap is faced with a world and government that is asking him to change, demanding him to change his beliefs and get with the program. But he refuses. He stays true to himself, true to the values of that scrawny kid from Brooklyn. He's the Superman of the MCU, and I love it. The filmmakers were never worried about making him cool, making him modern. They realized that being kind, optimistic, and loyal is, and always will be, cool. I remember I saw the first Avenger four times in the theater. There was something about that movie, about Steve, that kept me coming back. Seeing someone who was so good-natured and so kind, even though he was a scrawny kid who got beat up and beat down his entire life, spoke to me. And then he gets strong, becomes a sexy super soldier, and he stays good-natured. He stays kind, and he stays selfless. He stays that way after losing his best friend, and he stays that way when he loses his entire world. You watch that movie, and the final line hits you like a ton of bricks. Steve's woken up after being frozen for 70 years. He's woken up in a scary new world where most of his friends and allies are dead. Everything he knows, everything he knew is gone. And all he can think about is his dance with Peggy. 
it's a really powerful moment that tells the audience everything they need to know about Steve's character and what he really cares about. And he cares about people. As a kid, part of me didn't quite understand why Captain America was on the Avengers with guys like Hulk or Iron Man. He's a superhuman, sure, but he's not the strongest or fastest guy around. I guess back then, I just assumed the team should all be the mightiest heroes because it was in the name. But as I grew older, I learned that he was there because he was meant to be the heart and soul, not just adding to their percentage of brawn. You can add super strong guys to the team all you want, but if you don't have one guy to be the constant voice of reason, the guy that makes sure everyone's doing the right thing, then it doesn't matter. He's what keeps them from being the Seven from the boys, and makes them the Avengers. I learned to trust that Captain America always knows the right answer when a question gets complicated, and that without him, the team would be full of a lot of well-meaning super screw-ups that may end up doing more harm than good. He keeps the Avengers humble. He reminds them what's most important because he's the most down-to-earth and the most human. He's not a government assassin, or a billionaire, or a space god, or an irradiated rage monster. He's just a normal, humble guy stepping up to be a symbol for hope and freedom. And they needed someone to rein in Iron Man who's a dangerous menace. If you navigate toward a specific dark place on social media, you might convince yourself that our current young generation hates the Russo brothers. Every day a plethora of tweets are written with thousands of likes, all spreading the message that the Russos indeed are devils sent from hell to ruin our beloved characters. Because they're being fat phobic? Or because Captain America isn't gay? Or because Iron Man died? Um, okay. Anyway, since there's so much hate towards the Russo brothers going around, I felt like this would be a good opportunity to, well, thank them. And since I'm just a guest over here and I don't have that much time, I'm gonna thank the Russos and the other people working on these movies for giving us three of the best Captain America moments on film in the span of, what, 10 minutes in Avengers Endgame. First, there is Cap wielding Mjolnir. Then there is him standing up against a whole army by himself. Third, there is him finally commanding the Avengers to assemble. Oh wait, make that four moments, because there's also a shot of him realizing that people are actually coming to help him, which is pretty strong. I mean, just look at how he almost cannot believe that help is coming. It's so good. What makes these moments so satisfying is not just the acting, which is great. It's not the way that they tie into the larger narrative of the cinematic universe, which they do, it's the iconography, the way that they solidify themselves into history by merely existing. I cannot wait to watch Endgame again, so I can feel the goosebumps that these iconic moments gives me. I think that's enough fanboying for me, so back to you, Critic. So this is this is the part where the worst critic was meant to come in, and he was like, "Oh, thank you, um, everyone, um, for being in my video, and um, subscribe, please. Farewell." But the guy fucked up his outro because he's a fucking idiot. I was gonna say the c word, but I didn't want the worst critic's video to be demonetized. I personally don't have anything to say about Captain America. Uh, I don't give a shit about Captain America, but I edited the video. So, someone suck my penis, because it ain't gonna suck itself. And um, a woman isn't gonna fucking suck it, that's for sure. Um, also, subscribe to the worst critic if you haven't. He's an alright dude, his content's fine. Only reason he has subscribers is because of me. Whatever, we won't hop on that. Anyway, yeah. Um, thanks for watching. What the fuck does he say? One sec, let me pull up my Twitter DMs. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, shit, I found what he actually wanted me to say. Okay, well, actually, what he wanted to say. He wants to... Okay, he wanted to say, I want to thank High Top and Hyper for helping with this video, and also Godzilla Mendoza, um, especially considering he's a small little channel and he appreciates their kindness. Um, then he wants... And then his little fucking catchphrases. Have a great day, everyone. Subscribe, hit the bell, and farewell. <laughs>